Hello again, and welcome to Winnie with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earthwind Firewater Training Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. To all my faithful followers who read my blogs, posts, Twitters, uh, radio programs, and listen here every day at the Leadership Wrangler, if any of you ever see yourself in my creations, know that I am a storyteller. I collect bits and pieces from around the world to do my best to bring some fun, some fantasy, and truth to all who read and listen. There have been some misunderstandings of some of you that have seen yourselves in parts of, of our creations. To all of you, I say I have never on purpose written with the intent to harm any similarities to our personal interactions and un are unintentional. The stories are written to teach, raise awareness, and to entertain. I am but a simple man who is a storyteller of life as I see it unfold. Today, we're going to really look at something that, you know, has happened recently. I was sitting in a large auditorium and I was listening to a, a person speaking and I, I, I really love to do this. I, I, it's something I, I get a big joy out of listening to other people's thought processes and how they process different things. On this one occasion though, this person was speaking about the words on the level. And on the level, I, I you know, I, I grew up meant it meant that someone was going to tell me the truth. They were going to shoot it straight to me. But I went and looked it up. I, I thought to myself, I need to really make sure I, I understand this word. And it came up this in, in every dictionary that I went to find. Honest and straightforward. It meant on the level someone was going to really shoot it to me straight. And we're going to sugarcoat it. And they weren't going to go around the bend about it. <laughs> I have to tell you, this person was telling a story, and, 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 and I knew the story well. Unfortunately, it was really strange. What they read out of the story and what I received was two entirely different things. And I think that happens all the time. I don't think it happens very well that we might go and say, can I have a conversation with you? And this is really strange that we're on really opposite sides of the, of the situation. Now, I have to tell you that as I sat and listened to the speaker doing his best to make the points that he wanted to make, I wondered why the story he was telling was so far away from the story that I had read and understand, understood. His understanding and mine were, I'm not telling you, it was just miles apart. Now, he started out the story about and told a story about a level. Now, for those of you who have done any woodworking or built a home or any of those kind of things, that you know that a, a level is an old device, and it's used to find out whether or not you had built something level. And that's really where this came on the level. You know, where it, was it true? Was it true? Was it a fact? Was it there? And, you know, this level, if you've ever used one, you've known it's, it's usually some length, you know, where from one foot to several feet, depending on what you're using it for and what it's been designed for. But it has different round places that have a bubble device in it that lets you know when you're on the level. And reading that, I have to tell you that all the time is, is a, not a hard thing to do, but it is to make it perfect and be on the level. Now, of course, these things come in many different sizes and shapes. And if you went out to my wood shop, you would I can find, I probably have six or seven of them, all different lengths and sizes, depending on the job they were designed to do. And that's where I really want to get here, is the job they were designed to do. I believe we're designed to do the same and be on the level. This political correctness stuff, I'm not so sure is a helpful fact in life. But let's take a further look at this. Now, this gentleman brought up the idea that 
did we use we users of the level want to make sure that we saw the object as level or level as our eyes saw it now if you ever build anything in, in any home you will find that almost every wall is not truly level whether vertical or horizontally you're going to find it's a little off plumb they say and the plat means level now many times we'll when you're building something, you can make it look level to your eye because our eye takes in the whole piece and adjusts it to the situation. Just like we do in real life. We take our eyes and our ears and we adjust it to the situation with we were brought up in, that we were accustomed to, the people around us, and we adjust it to there. So what I might see as level, you very well might not see as level. I hope that you understand where I'm coming from. Here's the, the big crux of the matter is, do you want things to be level as you see them and understand, or do you want them actually level? You see, if they're going to be actually level, we might have to do more work. That's where she gets a little bit strange. We lived in an old home and this old uh, cracker box, they called it, and it lived, was up on blocks and it had loblolly pine floors. And believe me, nothing was truly to plumb there. That house was almost 100 years old and, and it tilted a little bit and it, it leaned a little bit. And in order to make things look right, I actually had to hang things that were a little off plumb, a little off level. And people would come in and say, wow, that's really good. And I'd say, boy, I hope they never put the level on it. In my personal life, this is even harder. Because if we're going to actually tell the truth, and we're actually going to take and be on the level, sometimes we have to do a little more work and dig through the foundation to find out where it came from and how it became to be. That puts us on a different situation. It's taking the time to do that. You see, in that old house, in order to make things on the level, I would have had to jack up part of the house and redo the foundation and, and, and put a lot of work into it. And we decided that on the level meant by our eyes and not by the level that we held. In our personal lives, in our lives around our, our situations, our organizations, and our country, I think we need to do the digging. And if we need to take and reestablish that foundation, it's something we're going to have to take the time to do. You see, when we don't take the time and we just make it so it seems level to the eye, I think we start to move ourselves backwards. So here's the ticket. You see many times the optical illusion of level is different from the actual level. Our eyes see and adjust to its surrounding. Understand how that's working. And seeing the object as level, even when a device that you have in front of you, holding it up on the wall, says it's not. Now this gentleman's main question really came out as, do we see things as they are or as we wish them to be? In other words, do we see them as level or really on the level? You see the difference here. His, his was more to the point of equality for all. I'm not sure that we can ever have equality for all. Did he mean that we are all more or less unlevel? I think so. I, I really believe that people do the best they can with what they have, with where, they're, where they came from, and the knowledge that they've acquired. If we're going to really be on the level with each other in our world, and we're going to do it in our corporations, we're going to do it in our nation, we're going to do it in our homes and our families, yes, in our religious organizations too, we're going to have to start to maybe dig in that foundation just maybe have to change our paradigm just a little bit and just maybe put some no more structure maybe some more rebar and concrete 
to shore up and make right. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. But I have to tell you, when I get to the question, can the human race ever be totally equal? I'm not sure that that's a possibility. You see, we each must answer that question of what equal means to ourselves and those around us. Do our inequities um, balance us and mean we are basically all level, all equal? You see, I have found that I'm not great at some things. And when I need to, I bring some in someone around me. By adding them to what I do and myself, I add another person, we become level. So that's why I'm saying I'm not so sure we can always be on the level all by ourselves. Now, I just have to say that I just, this all equal thing, just I don't understand it a whole lot. I just don't think it's in the world, in the possibility. There will always be someone that has something that the other person wishes to have. Even if it was given to them by that person that has it, it would just never be enough. It would not satisfy the hunger of the individual. But again, I see over and over as we, as we work together as a team, the foundation becomes stronger and the level happens by itself. On our own, we're probably unlevel, each and every one of us. <laughs> I'm a little crooked. My brother, the doctor, says that one side of our body is always larger than the other side. And that, that's, just, that's just the nature of it. There's always something that wants to be better than the other person. Trying to do it on your own? Not so sure you can be on a level. You're going to always need to bring someone else in with you. I do believe, though, I do believe that you can have what you want if you're willing to work for it. And wanting and working are two different things. I have found that if you want, you can sit there and want all you want and then take a time and, and put a lot of time and worry and everything else into it. And it just doesn't happen. But when you see yourself teaming up with another person, the want becomes reality. Because you're willing to put the work in. And this is how we become on the level. You see, I do agree with one thing that the, this gentleman had to say. He said that we as individuals need to work together in order to become level. And I do agree with that. We all stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. And if you don't think that's true, just take a look at what you're wearing today. Now, I have a cotton shirt on. Did I go out and grow the cotton? No. Did I prepare the field? No. Did I plant the seeds? No. You know, did I weave it? No. But I sure do enjoy it. It took many different people to put this together. So to make my shirt be on the level, it took a lot of different people to make that happen. You see, the, what I'm trying to get at is, is that we can do nothing of greatness. Nothing of greatness alone. We support those who come before us and we'll be there supporting those who come after us. So when you ask this question, <laughs> are you on the level? I usually say I do the best I can. How can we work together to become on a level with one another? This thing of doing what's right, because it's the right thing to do, no matter what the cost, really is the start of the thought process. Now, many of you know that I never, or almost never, leave you apart without giving you some helpful tips to put in your life today to become more on a level. <laughs> you know, it does sound simple. I remember my grandfather, who was a professional carpenter, would, would pull out this big level and he, we, he'd level everything that we worked on. 
until we went to go install it. And then he would tell me over and over, we need to put a shim under that one quarter because it looks unlevel, even though the level says it is. And this was because usually the floor was not level. And here we were shimming up underneath the bottom to make it look level. So let me give you some ideas. The first one is I'm going to say stand firm. Stand firm with the intentional direction of ongoing continuous learning and the sharing of knowledge. The biggest thing we can do as individuals here in this great country, in this great land, is to ongoing learning. You see, I believe in education. I understand it. But I believe that formal education will only get you so far. I believe that's a great start. And you can hang that thing on the wall, it's all good. But it's what comes next, where you put the intellectual with the emotional, and now we get to share knowledge with one another. Two can equal one and become level. The second idea I want to pass on is, is that build strong relationships with others. Now, building build, bridge building with those who, who you feel have slighted you or, or misjudged you or mistreated you. Reach out and do your best to build that. You just never know. You might learn one or two things from them. You just never know. And you might find out what it is and made them mistreat you or mistrust you or slight you in some way that you misunderstood. Try to find some level ground and build from there. And here's what I'm going to tell you. If you can't find the level ground, get the bulldozer out. Flatten that piece and make it happen. I won't tell you that you'll always be successful here. There are, I've only met one or two people in my whole life that I couldn't find some level ground and make some things happen and build that strong relationship. But there have been one or two. It's been frustrating. But on those situations, I know that I've done my level best. <laughs> I've done my level best to make it happen. And that is all you can do. The next thing I'm going to share with you is to practice intentional, emotional, intellectual discussions. You see this thing of EQ, emotional intelligence, and IQ, intellectual, they really do have to go together. If you're just intellectual, well, I, 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 I give you a big plus and a pat on the back, but I don't think you'll ever be able to make those intentional connections that you're going to need. Again, no one person can stand on their own and become greatness. I just don't believe it happens. Even Albert Einstein had people around him. He shared ideas with, bounced things off of until they became true. We all need someone somewhere. But this thing of emotional intelligence and intellectual intelligence, you see, it just opens discussions. Learning from others' points of views and them from yours. It takes emotional and intellectual intelligence for the balance, the level. One cannot be level without the other. But those two things working together, well, oh, I'll tell you what. You just can't imagine, or maybe you can, the things that can happen. I'm going to also encourage you an idea that you can put in there. Become intentionally civil. Something we've kind of lost in our world today. I'm going to encourage you to become intentionally civil with your discourse and your conversations. You see, we need to constantly be seeking the truth as we know it at this time and this place in our life. But without the discussions, we, we really can't really say for sure that what we know is what we know. 
But if the discussions become vulgar, name-calling, reaching the base instead of reaching the sky, then they don't become productive. And the cost that will be, be weighed here will be great. Growing and maybe even changing our mind as the intelligence and understanding grow for each of us. Leaders, the reason this became so important to me was is that it just, I realized very quickly that two people read the same material and were on opposite sides of the thought process. Not because they didn't like each other, not because one was more intelligent than the other, one was, had, it was because they had been raised in different places by different people around different things and their lives had taken them on different paths. And so they were looking at it from an entirely different set of glasses, so to speak. Each had a different prescription in those glasses. The unfortunate part here is, is the non-verbalization going to and from, so one can understand from the other. You see, I'm going to encourage you to do this last piece. Never give up being willing. Never give up being willing to learn and understand from another person. I'm going to tell you this is not as easy as it sounds. I'm going to tell you that it's, it needs to take intentional practice to be put into place. Being on the level is a lot harder than you think. When we are not willing to hear some of our faults from the person who is being on the level, whether it's say the being honest and straightforward, Personally, I like people who don't beat around the bush. If they tell me they don't like me, that's okay. I'm going to ask them why. And I'm going to inquire with intentional questions. What happened? And how can I learn from that so that doesn't happen again? What I do, was it a mannerism? Was it a speech? Was it a word? What was it that we misunderstood stood with one another? I believe there's good in everyone. I, I just do. I really believe that knowing that you can't do it all by yourself, knowing that being on the level takes work, knowing that redoing foundations means sometimes taking the jackhammer to it and taking things out so you can redo the structure and be on the level. I believe in our world today, the communication that we have with one another needs to have some jackhammers taken to it. Even if it's only so it makes enough noise that people stop and listen. But until we're intentional, truly intentional about building bridges with one another, truly intentional about learning from one another, truly intentional about having civil discourse with one another, we will always struggle. And that's why I provided these simple things for us to be on the level. So when someone comes to me and says, Dick, I want to be on the level with you, I do my best to not get my hackles up right away. Sometimes, and there has been those times, people have been on the level and told me something really good. <laughs> but, but when they approach me and they say, I'm going to be on the level, I have to tell you from past experience and growing up in a, in a, or in a family that when that was said, it was usually something going to be negative. How about we change that around? And we say, hey, I want to be on the level with you. You've done a great job. I see what you're doing. I think we've got to get more people to do that. You see, why can't we change the intentional thought process here?
change the paradigm. Instead of, hey, let me, I want to speak to you on the level. Change the paradigm from a negative to a positive. Now, that's something to think about. But these ideas that, you know, let you be on the level that I've provided for you, and I'm going to run over again, they're pretty exciting to me. As leaders, being on the level is where we have to be. And we, I would want to encourage you to have the people that work with you and you surround you are on the level. That they have enough faith and confidence and trust in you that they can be on the level with you. If you're not quite standing on firm ground, maybe they can help firm it up. But you have to be willing to listen. You, but you do, please do, stand firm with the intentional direction of ongoing continuous learning and sharing of knowledge. You see, that's what sets us apart from being a herd animal. We share knowledge, but it's ongoing and continuous learning that will always propel that situation. Build strong relationships with others. Build bridges with those who you feel have slighted and mistreated you. Try to find the level ground and build from there. I, 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 I know that's not going to always be easy, but try and do your best to do that. Practice intentional, emotional, plus intellectual discussions. <clears throat> Excuse me, learning from others, points of view, and them from yours. It's got to be a two-way street. Them learning from you, you learning from them. And you just never know. You might put those two things together and come up with a whole new way of thought. But it does take an emotional and intellectual intelligence to create that balance on the level. <laughs> you see, this is what we're talking about. I'm going to encourage you to become intentionally civil with your discourse and conversations with others. Constantly seeking the truth as you know it at the time in the place of your life right now. Growing may be even changing your mind as the intelligence and understanding grows within yourself as with the those around you. And Please, never give up being willing to listen and learn and understand. Be intentional about your practice of this. Be intentional about learning to just really listen. Really listen. Listen to understand, not just to answer. And then put some time and research into it so you really get the grasp. Knowing how other people think and why they think that way. How they came to that conclusion. And them listening to you on that same opportunity. How you think. How you came to that conclusion. Very many times we come to a totally different thought process between the two of us. And we become on the level. <laughs> I see our time has come running out. And so on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, I want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. My hope is that you have received a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you become a better leader. Now, if you have any questions or comments on today's program, don't hesitate. Give me a call. 727-422-1833. 727 422 Send me an email, dick at ewfw.org, dick at ewfw.org. Go to the website, leave me a message there, spend some time, www.ewfw.org, www.ewfw.org. And when you're ready for me to come out and do a, a leadership seminar at your location with your people, give us a call. And until next time, this is D.W. The Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast. And remember, only you can change you.